because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the WBA Continental Super Bantamweight Champion. Hopey Price, hopey. Good solid 10 rounds under your belt in your first 10 rounder against an ex uh, a former world title challenger, European champion. I mean, what more can you ask? N nothing at all, you know. A good performance against, um, you know, a, a crafty guy, you know, former WBC world title challenger, European champion. You know, he's been there, he's, he's, he's been mixed at the top, so um, for someone. On my ninth fight, you know, I believe that, that that's a big step up and a, a big win on my resume. You seem to be frustrating him a lot in there when you were pulling out the jab and you let it hang out there a lot. You seem to be getting really, really frustrated with that. Um, just your thoughts on that? Yeah, he seemed like um, he was getting a bit frustrated, you know. He gave me a few kicks sometimes. I thought there was a bit of kickboxing going on. So I was going to elbow him back or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, no, um, yeah, I could see he was getting frustrated. Maybe I could have capitalised on that a little bit more. But it's just, just learning things, you know, things what. I haven't been and dealt with in a professional ring. I've never had to deal with someone getting frustrated and kicking me in the middle of the ring. So it's boxes ticks, you know. These are things what only fighters who's mixed at the top level do. So, um, you know, a good learning fight for me. And these are the fights I need to progress to be uh, an elite fighter. Uh, your coach, Dave Cole, alluded to that fight that this craftiness in these world title challengers and these world elite fighters that they do certain little things crafty whether it be a chin in your neck or whatever it may be they do these little subtle things that you've yet to learn or experience yet so again great learning fight that definitely you know little things they try and do little things to upset you you know to draw you in and sometimes as a young kid you just feel like um, you want to oh, go and, and, and let the shot score but you've just got to learn to be clever you know you've got a, a long time it's not it's not a rush you know it's not I'm doing four or six rounds I've got, got a long fight ahead of me so um I felt like I was I was breaking him down, you know, and I felt like I'd done the ten rounds easy. Well, breaking him down, I mean that right hook to the body, man. I, I could hear that from where I was sitting. Sometimes I was standing at the back there at the stage, so I could hear it from there. So, I mean, a shot that was sinking in, but he seemed to just stick around there. But again, the body punching that was is that something you've been working on with Dave in the gym there? Yeah, definitely. You know, all, all varieties, you know, body punches. Head punches, you name it, you know, controlling the distance, everything. Just an all round game. I never work on one specific thing. I, I work on being an all round fight, and I can fight inside, outside, long, short, whatever you, it may be. So it's just um, being in with these different styles, these different challenges, and, and using my skills and working on the different things that I've been working in the gym and putting them in the fights. I mean, 10 rounds, you're fit enough. Yeah, that, that's, that's for sure. How did you find the 10 rounds? Well, very easy, you know. I think um, a few times I could have probably. Let my hands go a little bit more, but it was just just these little bit of craftiness and a little bit of um, not wanting to make too many mistakes. So I was just uh, taking my time and uh, making sure I come out. One thing Dave said to me, he said uh, he wants me to be active this year. So uh, he said no cuts, no bumps, no bruises, no injuries, and uh, I'm still as good looking as I was before. <laughs> don't drop that belt. Hopey, don't drop it. Um, Jamie alluded to it as well, touched on the fact that you, it feels like we've yet to see the best of Hopey Price, and yeah. I mean it does feel like. Uh, you're, you're in second gear, third gear, so if there's still more to come, that's a scary thing. It is for the other people, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I'm just taking my time, you know. I, I was cruising a little bit in there at times, but sometimes it's all, it's all you need to do, you know. There was, I was drawing gaps out of him and things, but sometimes when someone's negative complaining and keeps getting frustrated, you've just got to try and make your own gap and find your own gap. And sometimes he wasn't showing it, he was being negative, so... You can't do it when it's not there sort of thing, so that was it, I was just taking my time and doing what I need to do. A name that you said and Dave Cobble said that you'll take this year is uh, Jack Bateson, same division, same city. Almost makes sense, I mean you're both young fighters um, in the same division from the same city, like I said, I mean, that makes sense, is that going to happen this year? Yeah, 100%, you know, um, I've got the right team behind me, I've got Eddie behind me, I've got Dave behind me and um, I'm sure they'll make, make the fight happen, you know, make all, all these big fights happen. Like I said, I wanted to headline in Leeds. What better fight to headline in Leeds than two Leeds lads, you know, and uh, I'll show them the number one of Leeds Town. Can that happen next for you and Jack? I mean, Jack's coming off that loss against Shabazz Masood. Um, you're fresh out the ring now, so is that the next fight? Possibly. I don't know if Dave Colwell can say anything. Dave, could you say anything about Jack Bateson being next? Can you allude to anything? This year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> Just one thing for me, they are old men at least, but... Do you know me? I will fight absolutely anybody. There's not one person that fears me. But my team does the right thing by controlling me, picking the right fights at the right time, and one by one I'll take them all out. Well, finally, we talked about the crowd. You had a good number from there. Yeah, I've you know. travelled all the way up from Leeds to Newcastle. I mean, that's uh, 
a good number of fans there for you. Yeah, definitely. No, a lot of support. Uh, big thanks to them all for coming up. Um, that's one thing I say. Uh, they all get behind me. They all support me, whether it be in London or in Newcastle. They all come and support me, and um, we'll have the place rocking if we do fight in Leeds because you've seen what Warrington can do, and I'll do the same thing. Yeah, well, I mean, if Jack Bates and you do get that fight, I mean, two Leeds lads, that's going to be an absolute cracker. But listen, hope you're going to enjoy the rest of the night. Congratulations yeah, on the win, and the belt looks nice, mate. Thank you. Well done, mate. Cheers. to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. Win it, they're guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day,